mercy What's up, people? It's your man, Irv Lowe, reporting live direct from the automobile, sweating like the devil. Because the devil's sweating anyway, because he's he's not in hell, but he's sweating. And if he's sweating, I know I'm sweating. But anyway, I know um somebody said, you know, turn my camera around, you know, make it sideways so I can see the whole screen. Well, um, I got to go get a new uh, a cell phone holder whenever I get time to. But that's why I've been doing it this way, because my freaking cell phone holder is, is beat up now. So, yeah, so when I get a chance to, because I stay busy, um, when I get an opportunity, I'm going to stop at Best Buy or some, you know, some electronic store to go get that but until then yes it will be recorded this way so please forgive me but at the end of the day still enjoy what i'm bringing to you now <laughs> i gotta laugh man i got i gotta laugh bro lou walton i'm so happy i'm hoping that the lakers let him go at the end of the season guy's terrible man oh my gosh man and and, and one thing about me you know i'm always going to talk about the players we let go always going to talk about it because it's, it's a reminder of how bad our front office is. I know a lot of people talk about, um, and I, you know, and I, and I'm not even talking about the DeAndre Russell with the 44 point thing. You know, it, it's just the point of it that if Magic Johnson don't get a free agent this off season, it's basically halfway a failure. Um, the reason why I say that, but I, I think that they might get Demarcus Cousins. That's why I think they're leaning to. I mean, that's basically on rumors that they show a mutual interest. So we'll we'll see. But I'll share with you guys what they can really do. They can sign DeMarcus similar to what uh, the Pelicans signed Julius Randle for, where he played one year with him. Basically, you know, he'd be like the number two punch or whatever to help build up his uh, his value. And then the Lakers allow him to go back into the free agent market to get what he's what he's deserving of. You know what I mean? So with that being said, you still had opportunity to get Anthony Davis at these service one year, whatever team he go to as well. But the Lakers, Luke Walton, Luke Walton freaking sucks. Sucks, man. I mean, let's be honest. I'm, and I'm not saying it because I'm following, you know, following the wagon. Everybody else talking about Lou Wong. I've been talking about Lou Wong, so let's make sure we understand that. But I always said that I respect Lou Wong based on the fact that he is the Lakers coach. He's part of the organization. So I'll just critique him because he's going to be here for two to three years. So in retrospect, that I told you guys by the All-Star break or prior to the end of the season, they're going to get rid of him. I told y'all that uh, at the beginning of the season, and I told y'all that last year. I said he probably do at least three years here. Imagine probably getting him... Um, you know, one year after he get the superstar, see how everything work out with him and that superstar. If it doesn't work out, nine times out of ten, they're going to find a way to get him out of there. And I still got to drop y'all that video what I think about this season and the whole fiasco of what's really going down. It's my opinion, but I want to break sure, make sure I share it with you guys um, doing my, whenever I do my, my next podcast. But listen, the Lakers, you know, they played the freaking Bucks. The Bucks didn't have the Greek freak, but they still had Middleton. Middleton, man, that guy is freaking nice, dude. That dude was... Man, the Lakers defense, man, it's just it's just like put it like this. The Lakers are not playing strong defense. You can tell they're trying though, but they're not trying hard enough. Like a couple couple sequence, they played pretty good defensive wise. But based on the fact that they know they're not going nowhere and and they're really nothing to play for, I'm not really mad at it. I'm I'm I'm, I'm more mad at the part that Lou Walton is not playing these other players on the bench. That's what I'm frustrated about. I don't want to see Ron. I understand Rondo playing to you know to build his value up. I understand KCP is playing to build his value up, which makes sense. Because there's no guarantee that even one of them will be here next year. So in retrospect to that, I want to play and make sure I get out there and build my stock value up so I can have opportunity to go to another team. Because KCP, I know a lot of y'all be tripping on KCP big time. But y'all don't never want to call it that dude Bullock, man. That dude haven't done anything. I know he had 13 points last night, but let's be honest. This guy come right in and start right over KCP and anybody else that actually was playing the two. Josh Hart, who's, who's hurt, and I've been said it before, they should have shut him down. I don't know why the hell Luke Walton got this guy playing knowing he's messed up. You know, all you're doing is basically hindering him. When when you got, when Brandon Eagle went down, Lonzo Ball went down, Josh Hart should have been, he should have been shut down as well. Because now what might happen is this guy might mess around, go to the doctor, and, and most high forbid, but go to the doctors, and he say, oh man, you got to have surgery. And this going, you might be out the first couple months of the, of the next season. It's, it's stupidity from the from the from whoever the whoever the medical medical staff team we got they freaking suck, the staff coaching staff freaking suck, the front office freaking suck, Genie Bus freaking suck, the whole freak organization suck. Got to call it for what it is, man. They all freaking suck, man. I still love them, but they suck. All of them freaking suck, and I don't want to get in there. I'm, I'm gonna do my ranting on my part because I really want to talk about some things. And I, like I said, I'm gonna start doing my podcasts on Saturday, so y'all can you know. I, I'm I'm gonna get to a point. Where I'm gonna set it up where you guys can chime in, where you can call and we can talk. Um, once I actually get a, a decent time within my, my personal schedule to see if I can actually set that up. But anyway, you don't play nobody. This guy, a muscle man. I mean, 
listen, you listen. I know a lot of y'all talking about the D'Angelo trade. You know, what well, Magic had to do this. You know, he had to do that to get you know to get rid of Moscow truck contract. Okay, I'll give him that. But all these trades afterwards, hell no, you can't give him that. You can't sit there and agree with that crap. Hell no. Who agree with that crap? Hell, you you don't agree with that crap. Hell no. Sorry, man. Matt Jones had making some bad moves. I know he said, oh, he got LeBron. Listen, LeBron was going to come here regardless. I think LeBron had already in his plan because I told y'all in the video um, about LeBron trying to get his brotherhood here. You know, he said when he retired, he would love to play for play with Dwayne Wade, uh, Carmelo, and Chris Paul before they all retire at least one year with them guys. You know, so, you know, it probably could happen, but I know Jeannie Buss probably put a foot down with the Carmelo Anthony situation because I know if it's up to Magic, he would have brought him in there because he's going to do anything to, to make LeBron happy. But, like I said, I don't want to give up too much of my information. But the thing is that make me mad about Luke Walton is this. At the end of the day, we can see here and cry to the Blues that make all the excuses about, oh, they were injured. You know, we didn't have this. We didn't have that. LeBron missed 19 games. I don't want to hear that bull crap. You know why I want to hear it? Because when I look at the L.A. Clippers and look at Doc Rivers and what he's doing with a team that been basically everybody counted out, when they go on a 71, 70 of their last eight games with a bunch of uh, freaking journeymen. Journeymen. You know what I mean? And, and, and I'm gonna jump into the Dot River situation, but when you when you go win seven, eight games, man, and then you you make all these excuses about our organization, that's that's a bunch of bull crap, man. Our coach freaking sucks. He's inexperienced. And it's a prime example of that. You take whatever the, the front office is giving you, make it work. To prove that listen, I can coach. Screw all that. You gotta put your foot down. And, and listen, you and LeBron got bump head, bump heads. Imagine them get imagine them that listen. See, this is this is the thing that pissed me off about Luke Walton. You trying to cater to LeBron when Jeannie Buss got your back. You should have bumped heads. If y'all got to bump heads to make sure you want to run the office, you want to run, bump heads. If Jeannie Buss got your back, you step out and do what you got to do to make the thing work. Screw all that bull crap, man. Lots of balls had the point. You know, I'm, 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 uh, lots of balls should have been the point guard. You made LeBron James play power for it. You don't like it? You go to Jeannie Buss. Oh, go with Matt here. You know, like a regular business. You know what I mean? If your manager getting on your nerves and, and y'all having a disagreement and your manager treating you like crap, you go over here and talk to his vice president or his, or his manager. Everybody got a manager. That's why Jeannie's there. She protected you. But you a fool. You let you let these things take place. So because of that, now you are suffering. You're going to be out the door, which is cool. I don't really give a hell. But anyway, why do you not play the young guys? You guys are really trying to win these damn games for what? And that's what it is. Like I told DeAndre Payne, oh, we're in tank mode. Tank, 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 tank. No, you retard. We're not in tank mode. If we was in tank mode, then why he's not playing um, Ingram and all these other guys, man? Why not playing them? LeBron took off the game, right? Here's the thing. This is what I saw line up would have been. Kuzma and Bullock, you know, at the forwards. Bullock could play the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the small forward. He's 6'8". He played the small forward. Kuzma played the power forward. You had JaVale McGee to play the center, right? Okay, then after that, you have freaking KCP and Rondo to start it off. Then you bring in Alex Caruso, um, Mo Wagner, Bunga, Bunga. I had to freaking stop the video because my camera got hot and I was freaking going off. But forget those two minutes. I don't even want to talk about them two minutes. I was just going off. I was <laughs> I feel like I was drunk, but I'm not. Anyway, going back to what I said, and the bench should be um, Mo Wagner at the um, power forward, Williams at the center. Um, Bunker at the um, small four spot, um, uh, Alice Caruso and um, Ingram, you know, at you know, the, the round out the uh, backcourt, and that's what it should be. I mean, if we if we try to win games, understand, but I don't know why it's best to see what we got with those young players, you know, or the, or the G League guys to see who can return, you know. What I mean, I, and that's how I look at it, like, you know, don't get me wrong, Rondo and them should play like a half or whatever. You know, and then let the let the G League play the second half. Whatever you want to do it, you know. I mean, mix it up, but, you know, just spread, you know, make it equally. Um, you don't have to get Rondo. All. I mean, yeah, well, if you're looking out for Rondo and KCP and them guys and trying to make sure they get the opportunity to go to somewhere else, that's cool. But I still think you need to play them young guys. And that's my thing. Also, now with the Dot River situation, you know, one thing about the Laker media, man, y'all, that's why we tell you guys, don't listen to two, don't, don't, play like this. I'm not saying don't listen to them because that'd be, I'd be, be foolish of me to say that. But, do not take everything they say with a possibility that it's going to happen. Some of the stuff they say, I, I put like this, 65% of the stuff they say, is, you got to take it with a grain of salt. You know, there's a rumor floating around that Doc Rivers and the Lakers show interest in one another. That's why it goes back to me about the DeMarcus Cousins situation, about they having mutual interest in each other. 
first and foremost, where you get this information from. Now I'm going to start to think. Now I'm, I'm, I'm really starting to um, relook at and revalue, uh, reevaluate some of the information that y'all putting out there because it's like they said that the Lakers and Dot Rivers are mutually interested with each other. What's the first thing Dot Rivers do? He comes straight out the board. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me put this right now, this issue right now, or this rumor to rest. And he went right there and said, he explained about how, you know, the um, the owner of the Clippers, you know, looked out for him, gave him an opportunity to have a way out. So if he didn't like what was going on, he can, you know, leave anytime. And then after that, they decided that, you know, extend his contract for two years, you know, two years afterwards. And he praised this guy. He said this guy looked out for him. He said, he, you know, and he literally showing, like, man, love for him. Basically said that, he said, look, me and Matt Jones are cool. We good friends, you know, and, and he said that. He said, but he's basically telling you, like, look, why would I leave an organization that's looking out for me and go to an organization that's in in in, in dismay? I mean, he's not gonna stay, he's not gonna throw imagine him out there like that, but that's basically what he's saying if you're beating around the about beating around the bush. And and on top of that, you gotta look at, like I said before, you gotta look at Jerry West. Jerry West is a proven um individual to any organization you go to over Magic Johnson, Palenka, Genie Bus, any of them. If you look at his record, his resume speak for itself. Where he goes, there's there's winning results. From LA to Memphis, Memphis, Memphis was like a dying, a freaking dying freaking team. You know what I mean? You've never heard nothing about Memphis. Memphis was like one of the teams that you'd go in and spank a long time ago. You know, uh, big country and all them guys. You know, so um you think about it. When he got there, they, the whole the whole freaking atmosphere, the whole organization and the environment, it changed. You know, and he helped the Lakers actually get Paul Gasol. He basically gave them Paul Gasol. So I got, that's why I say with the biggest uh, situation, I know it's kind of upsetting, but it's like they just gave him back a reward, what they gave him, what he gave them back in the days. But anyway, personally, me, Dot Rivers, no, I would stay right there with the Clippers. And I'm telling y'all guys, the Clippers are going to be the face of L.A. And I know y'all want to hear that, man, because y'all like, oh, man, no, it's not going to happen. Man, listen, the Clippers right now got two opportunities. They got money to get two superstars. Uh, K, K, uh, K, Kevin Durant and Kwame both said they wanted to come to L.A. Think about it for a minute, guys. Just want to think about it. Jerry West. Now, if Jerry West decided he don't want to spend that money on them, which doesn't make sense to me, because why would you give it all on players or, or just or dismantle your team if you're not going to open up opportunity to get two superstar players? Nah, nah, nah. Remember, Jerry West was in Golden State. I'm just saying, you know, you got to get what's good. And Ka Kawhi and KD are probably, out of all the people that's on the free agent, um, this this thing, those are the two best people that's out there. You want to get those two. Those two alone will bring havoc in the West. I'm just be honest with you. And with Dot Rivers as an experienced coach, it, it can happen. So, I, I, you know, kudos to Dot Rivers. Um, I told you guys, I truly believe Ty Lue is coming here. That's my thing. Um, I know a lot of people don't want to hear that. I know a lot of people said that uh, Ty Lue's not a good coach, blah, blah, blah. Personally, to be honest with you, we don't know. I mean, I'm just going off what I see. When, when LeBron left, he didn't do a good job, and, and, and I'm just being honest with you. I mean, David Bland, to me, was a good coach. I know a lot of people talk about um, Brown. Mike Brown was a good coach. He wasn't a good coach, man. That guy can't LA, could he get it together? So before we start throwing around names and say, oh, this guy was a good coach, that guy was a good coach, let's get the hell out of here, man. You know, like I said, LeBron like like guys that he can actually uh, basically inherit his um, input, his own offense in there, some guy that's going to listen to him. Luke Walton, you know, they already bump his, and plus I told you, I'm, I'm, I'm no, let me stop because I don't want to get in there. Anyway. The Lakers need to play the young, the, the you know, the G League players to see what they got, man. To me, it's much more fun to watch them play right now because we ain't got. Think about it, we not win anything. We basically gonna be going to a draft pick. Oh uh, yeah, another once again. So it's more, why not play the G Leaguers? Let them play, man. Let them get that you know get opportunity because I don't mind watching Ingram take twenty three. I don't give a hell if he missed. We ain't got nothing. Listen, at the end of the day, it's listen. We got nothing to lose because we already lost anyway. There's no win win in this. The only way you can get out there is cross your fingers and hope that we get one of the top five draft picks. That's the only thing you can do. Cross your fingers, pray to pray to the, the little rabbits or whatever, because I don't know where everybody prays to, but you know, pray and hope that we can get one of them guys. Other than that, it's nothing really to, nothing really to play for. Just have fun, you know, um, just stay in the loop so we can have something to watch, entertain us until the playoffs start. And then once again, we all biting our fingers, crying and all that, holding on to our mama, telling her to feed us a bottle of milk because, you know, we're not going to make it again. 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 Damn, damn, damn. I can't take it. Damn, 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 damn. Another year, another failure. We got the best player in the world and we still can't make it. <laughs> Kobe, come back, Kobe. Come back, Kobe. Come back, Kobe. Kobe, come back, please. <laughs>
हम दोनों कहीं जाएंगे कहीं जाएंगे